recording. Ready? Yes, we are recording. I'm starting. Yeah. No, you um, should start. No, I think I started last time. Okay, no. just Good remember point. to making reference to- I was to trying to give you yeah. some shtick. Okay. <laughs> We're good. I'll be on the sidelines. Have fun. Ready? You're starting. No, no, you. No, I think I started last week. Good morning, everybody. Hi. It's Friday, so Sarah and I are continuing this week two of our updates from the Climate Caucus here in Montpelier, the Legislative Climate Solutions Caucus. We're trying to talk about solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to give you an update, um, and it's the second week, so you know we're sort of easing into the legislative session. We've got bills are starting to get introduced introduced and I uh, want to tell you a little bit about bill numbers so you can track it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, first bill uh, that, that we want to talk about today is H688 and that is the number that's been assigned to the Global Warming Solutions Act and uh, yesterday at Climate Solutions Caucus at noon we had a good presentation from uh, Chair Tim Briglin uh, who has done a tremendous amount of work uh, really putting some meat on the bones there of the concept of how we uh, how we put our aspirations into statute as requirements and what is the structure that we need in the state of Vermont to really bring all eyes of state government, uh, whether it be one of the agencies in uh, the administration or the legislature coming together to figure out how we uh, reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. That's right, and, and this targets Paris goals and ultimately net zero by 2050, tracking what Maine and, and New York have done, and gives accountability, a mechanism where citizens can say, really hold the legislature and state government's feet to the fire. Um, so that's H688. We'll put a link down below in the description. The other one is uh, S267. That's a bill that I worked on. Um, it's the so-called 100% renewable energy bill. And sitting in the corner, you guys can't see him, is Senator Andy Perchlick, who was a great help and a, a co-lead sponsor on that. Say hi, Andy. Hello. Um, that is uh, to get us to 100% renewable, increase the amount of local renewable energy here in Vermont. And we're also asking, we'll see where we land with this, but uh, an attempt to limit how much power we can get from large hydro, AKA Hydro-Quebec. Um, Hydro-Quebec is renewable under Vermont definitions, but there's a limit to how much we want to be uh, putting pressure on there because they want to expand. There's a lot of methanes released from Hydro-Quebec uh, when they flood new lands, et cetera. So if we get to 100% renewable, that's a great goal. We can't do it all by just depending more on, on Hydro-Quebec. That, that has real climate challenges, also vulnerability challenges for us just getting power from one source. Um, Sarah, do you want to talk about S220? Yes, I do. So S220 um, is really the uh, sort of first uh, first iteration of what could be a you know five year um, plan of transitioning so that we can make sure that all of the folks who help us in our homes and our buildings, um, uh, whether it be a, a realtor or an appraiser or your HVAC installer. Um, we want all of these people, when they get their license from the state, to get a little bit of information about how to help us uh, meet our energy standards. And so this is a bill, S-220, is, um, is in the Senate Government Operations Committee. Uh, they're going to take a first crack at it, and, uh, and after they've done their work on it, they'll send it over, and um, my committee, the House Government Operations Committee, will get a chance to take a look at it as well. Uh, and it's really about um, making sure that we're all on the same page about how we build our, uh, the most efficient homes. Or if you're retrofitting, we want you to we want you to get um, good advice on the renewable energy sources. And the, the logic is these are the professionals that come to our homes and help us make decisions about furnaces, hot water heaters, all those kinds of things. They have huge energy implications. They're licensed by the state as professionals. And at that moment, we want to make sure they understand incentives that the state has, maybe what utilities have, understand the state goals of reducing mm -hmm. climate uh, carbon emissions, and then therefore becoming partners with us. These are these folks are intersecting with thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of Vermonters every day. Um, so it's a promising beginning, and uh, because they're licensed by the state, of course, they have to they have to intersect with the state every 
three, two years, I think. So mm -hmm. great yeah. moment there for education. Yeah. So I've got something I yeah, want to yeah. interject. I, I okay. love this. Go. So yesterday um, we, we got our revenue forecast. Um, one of the important parts of, uh, of building a state budget each year is, uh, is getting our, our state economists to give us a, a good estimate of how much money we have to work with. Um, and I just want to read you a little clip from what the state economist said yesterday um, because it's pretty, uh, it's pretty spot on. Um, and this is Tom Cavett, and in his report he says, the economic costs of climate change may come slowly enough for many to ignore and irregularly enough for some to prevaricate. But these costs are undeniably growing in, with each year of record heat and devastating calamity. Policy delays to address this issue look increasingly indefensible, especially to the next generation. And you know what, I, that kind of a shout out in the in the revenue forecast uh, is unusual. Um, this is the first time that I recall seeing something that uh, that firm that we need to start uh, anticipating the cost of climate change to our future and um, really appreciate the state economists telling us that we need to get going. Well, and, and it's why I always encourage folks when they're talking about climate, the climate crisis, to talk about the economy because this is, you know, way too many Vermonters are living paycheck to paycheck, struggling to get by. And people will say, well, they can't afford electric cars and it's not realistic. That's true. And that's on us to try to figure out programs to help Vermonters who are lower income make sustainable choices and, and move into sustainable choices. But the way we have to, the, the thing that binds us easily together is economic struggle. I mean, middle class families are struggling, low income families are struggling, working class families are struggling. And if we can't pretend that's a struggle and the climate struggle is over here, they are inexorably linked. And that's where the economists shout out, if you like, is, is really uh, very valuable to mm -hmm. the way this building thinks in particular around state, state budget. Um, the last thing we want to leave you with, uh, if people follow the Climate Solutions Caucus progress this summer, process this summer. We had working groups that came up with all sorts of ideas, tried to boil those down to five main ideas, which some of which we were talking about. We also had lists of other smaller ideas that don't need to become bills. We're calling them every committee, uh, what do we call them? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. E EC, <laughs> EC project. So every committee has a project. So some of it is like, we have complete streets. That's a state law already. That you, when you're building a, a road, revamping a road, you've got to have a sidewalk, bike lane, and a roadway. That's the default for any state project. Um, for instance, we asked our folks in transportation committees, find out how we're doing. This has right. been the law for a while. Yeah. We don't really know how we're doing. So that's an example. It's not a bill, but it's a conversation we need to be having. I'm just going to prattle off a few of these here yeah. that are similar. We wanted, we're, we started incentivizing giving subsidies for electric vehicles. We also want to talk about whether or not it makes sense to give them for electric bikes. More and more people are using electric bikes you know, as an alternative to driving, that's good. We asked for a fee-based study. Um, Senator Perchlik is still over here watching kindly. Um, heard from the transportation uh, agency yesterday about fee-based. This is the idea that if you're buying a truck, you pay the same registration fee based on the cost. But we should we look at, if you're buying an inefficient truck, it would cost you a little more. If you're buying a, a more efficient truck, it would cost you a little less. So a price signal uh, when you're going to get registered. We we're gonna have more discussion about that coming forward. Um, the state has its own weatherization project for our own buildings. We call it SEMP, State Energy Management Program. I finally got that right. I've not gotten that right for a long time. It's taking you three there's months. A question, <laughs> there's a question, could we expand that from just state buildings to help town buildings and schools? I don't know, because we're going to want more money, but even in the state's case, we invested kind of this fund. It's paying itself back quickly because of the energy savings. So we want to see if we can expand that. It's a little example of an EC bill. Accelerating weatherization is uh, is going to help everyone. That yeah. keeps keeps more m money on the bottom line for our municipalities and our schools uh, and our state. And uh, right. so we know we want to managing that. food waste. This has a climate impact, and we want to see if our farms. A lot of farmers would be interested in taking little bits of compost, not becoming a huge compost operation. Our regulations right now don't allow that. We want to we want to look at that. That's mm -hmm. you know a, a project, not necessarily a big piece of legislation bus fares for Green Mountain Transit uh, for Central Vermont, Jimmy County, those systems are 
are, are in trouble. Uh, and the fares count for between 10 and 20% of their total budgets. So it's not a lot. And if you've ever ridden the bus, you gotta get on and feed your bill into the little machine and it never gives you change. And everybody waits while everybody feeds in and it slows the bus down. Mm -hmm. The drivers will tell you those bus, those machines break all the time. They're a huge pain. Yeah. What if, we invested some of our money and just made the fare free. Some cities around this, the country have done this and found it's work. People, ridership goes up because it's free, so you remove an income barrier, yeah. but also they become much more dependable because you don't have to wait eight minutes at this stop and two minutes at this stop. You just stop, people get on and you keep moving and it, and it means that it's more reliable, therefore people yeah. can count on it in a different way, which I think is ends up being a big part of the inconvenience to riding the bus. Yeah. So that's just a, a, a quick snapshot of some of the work we're looking at. You know, this is gonna be like, you're gonna be bored with our updates for a few weeks and then all of a sudden you'll be like, oh my God, why are you giving us so much? That's the, <laughs> the nature of the legislature yeah. here. Yeah. Sorry, I'm proud about what you got. That's quite all right. Um, no, I, I think um, you guys are gonna be excited about these updates coming forward and um, and we're going to definitely need to send out uh, a call to action as well. So, uh, so do stay tuned and uh, we appreciate your help. Hey, and by the way, uh, if you think of other smaller things like, uh, like Senator Pearson was just talking about, feel free to send them to us. Um, we'll put our contact information down at the bottom of the screen. Um, send along your ideas. It's not too late for us to try to get them into the mix of this Every Committee project. Uh, we want to thank, as always, Bob the Green Guy. For That's Bob the Green Guy. <laughs> for doing this with us, a total volunteer, and, and we couldn't do this without him because we don't really have the skills. Um, and, and I feel like I'm forgetting something else, but thank you, everybody. Uh, oh, the, the, the bills will be in the description here, yeah. uh, and we're working on more ways to, to get this easily across uh, to voters and, and Vermonters who are interested. Thanks for for watching. Yeah. See you next week. That was a good one. Was it? Yeah. <laughs>